I can't believe it. It's one minute past where we're supposed to be at this point, so everybody has spoken quickly. Um, I'd like to ask Jeannie Forrester to come up here now. And Jeannie has something that is really kind of nice to talk about. Uh, it's not something that is competitive in a way, uh, but it's something very nice. Jeannie is going to talk about public service and perhaps the leading public servant that we've ever seen here in the country. Thank you, Bruce. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming tonight. It's my uh, great pleasure to be the one to give this little speech tonight. I'm honored to be here tonight as both a state senator from Ray Burton's district and one of his constituents. It seems only fitting that the man we all know for such amazing constituent service will be the first recipient of an award that bears his name. Having been on the Executive Council for 28 of the last 30 years, Ray is New Hampshire's longest serving elected official. Ray joked with me recently that his combined service as an Executive Counselor and a Grafton County Commissioner numbers 74 years. But he's only 72 years old. <laughs> Nicknamed the Dean of the Council, you can mark his time in something much more than time served. Ray has outlasted six U.S. presidents, seven New Hampshire governors, 13 Senate presidents, eight speakers of the House, and 10 attorney generals. While some folks search endlessly for the fountain of youth, Ray discovered the secret to having a long and successful political career decades ago. I think everyone here tonight would agree there's a certain timelessness about his approach to politics, and Ovi just mentioned that. To Ray, extraordinary constituent service is something he practices every day. It's never been something a political consultant had to teach him, let alone encourage him to do. Year after year, Ray puts on a clinic how to be an out, outstanding public servant for all of us, and that's not just around election time either. His iconic yellow convertible is a staple of parades, fairs, town halls, award ceremonies and graduations, and yes, even a funeral or two. And of course, who can forget his signature comb? <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't bring any tonight. <laughs> like every master of his craft, Ray makes serving his constituents look easy and even fun. But if you look closely, you will see behind every promise he makes is hours of hard work not to mention thousands of miles on the road and lots of late nights. One of my fellow senators recently went on tour at the state prison in Berlin with Ray. During their time at the facility, he marveled at how Ray shook the hand of every single prisoner he met. You ruined it. While the others in the group kind of held back. Councilor Burton found out where they lived what they planned to do when they got out, and perhaps more importantly, if they had any friends in common. And guess what? They did. <laughs> Several times over. <laughs> My colleague was totally blown away by it all. He couldn't help but joke with Ray that one of the prisoners wouldn't be out for years, so why bother? Ray replied confidently that he had already done the math and figured out the guy could vote in 2016. <laughs> As a freshman senator and new to the political scene, I have counted myself extremely fortunate that Councilor Burton has generously mentored me. During the campaign and even now, he goes out of his way to make sure he introduces me to folks. I have to say that being with Ray is sort of like being with a celebrity. I can tell you that on more than one occasion at a parade or an old home day, I've practically gotten mowed down by people who want to meet or talk to Ray Burton. In the North Country, there are a thousand different stories about Ray, yet they all have one thing in common. They all seem to have a happy ending. 
but we're not here tonight to celebrate an ending. We're here to celebrate an outstanding public servant who shows no signs of slowing down. And we're here to inaugurate the Raymond S. Burton Extraordinary Service Award. And who better to be the first recipient than the man himself, Ray Burton. On behalf of the Grafton County Republican Committee and all your fans, I am delighted to present the first Raymond S. Burton Extraordinary, Extraordinary Service Award to the Extraordinary Gentleman from Executive Council District on Ray Burton. Someone once said, doesn't Councilor Burton call you a lot with requests and things to do? And I said, well, he does a few, but nowhere as near as many as we call him and ask for his help. So I hope we have something. I'll guarantee it's the heaviest gift you'll get tonight. Um, and we have something which is, I think, pretty unique. And it's, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but these this bookends, these pieces of historic sandstone were once part of the United States Capitol. When they tore down part of the Capitol to enlarge it, um, these were saved. Um, it was the east front of the Capitol when it was extended in 1958. These pieces of sandstone, sandstone which you now possess, were taken from the removed portions, and this is a tangible and genuine fragment of New Hampshire history, of American history. This historic piece of sandstone may have imperfections. This sandstone, however, is more than 200 years old, and the minor wearing in the stone attests to its authenticity. So on behalf of Congressman Bass and all the people in our district, I'm pleased to present you. Jeannie Forrester, ladies and gentlemen, and the Grafton County Republicans. You have been most kind to me over these many years. You have overlooked my sins. You have overlooked my friends, Russians, and life does move forward for the economy and for those things that those of us who are in for the long haul, in for the long haul, and all of you are in for the long haul this evening and as life moves forward that we've cared for and fought for here in rural America. I'm very honored by this um, gesture here, this Extraordinary Service Award, and, um, um, but I consider it just the beginning, <laughs> just so that all are aware, and Marsha, this is your lead story tonight. <laughs> um, Next January, I will be announcing for re-election to County Commissioner and Executive Council and anything else that I might qualify for. <laughs> and I am pleased uh, that um, Jim Walker, who has served as the chair of the Friends of Ray Burton Committee since 1977, is here tonight watching over me. Lynn Wheeler, the fiscal agent, Sue Rowley, volunteer coordinator, Bernie Prochnick, computer services, Ned Stein, transportation coordinator, Dwayne Baxter, scheduling, Whitey Shallon Mitchell, a former student intern, to my office, and B.J. Perry is under contract, starting last week to watch over me to make sure I move along and stay on the right path here. And now this year I thought, well, maybe I should reach out and advise, get some advice beyond this team and certainly some of the Grafton County folks that have allowed me to just mention their name tonight, Terry Dudley, Rick St. Hilaire, Brian Ward, he's my legal counsel along with Dave Nixon, a longtime friend of mine from Manchester, 
Even though he's a Democrat, he still is a friend, and that's how all of us who are in Falon Hall get reelected. Once you get the nomination, you move to the independent voters. We know what the Democrats are going to do. We hope the Republicans are going to vote for you, but you've got to reach to that great body of independent-minded people. Julius Tucker, Dick Hannaway, Dave Presby, Bonnie Han, Tom Thompson, and I've even appointed Peter Thompson tonight. And you know, while I'm up here, I'm going to make all of you on my advisory committee <laughs> so that you all feel caught. One of the things I live for, one of the things I live for is the student intern program. And sitting right over there is the 140th intern, Ben O'Leary. Ben, isn't it great to see some Plymouth State people over here? No thanks for including those people in the Ron Paul campaign. I don't care what campaign they are. That's how we all got started. I remember Wesley Powell, a former governor, very progressive university supporter, would roll into Plymouth as governor, and many of us would gather around and he'd say, don't be discouraged, just because you're young, you're just getting started. Now, here you go, Charlie Bass. Uh, presenting me with a piece of limestone that's 200 years old. Now, is this an indication that he was around or he's going to stay around? Of course he's going to stay around. Another great public servant. Um, as we move through the presidential preference primary, New Hampshire possesses something that I don't think any other state has. If you want to be at the right place, and tonight is one of those places, you can shake the hand of the next president of this country. And that's the beautiful part about this thing called America. It's the beautiful part about the thing called the state of New Hampshire. Governor, it's a pleasure to see you here this evening. I noticed you slipped out that Britain comb over there. A red one. Hey, you and I are lucky to get in on the glow tonight. Anna Romney, Mr. Perry's son here, and the folks who are running for the highest office in the land, most powerful position in this world. So Jeannie, uh, again, great public servant, uh, going to go places, with the exception of Executive Council, I hope. <laughs> but hey, let's get on and enjoy the evening. And again, thank you all for this courtesy. It is a courtesy that I accept with honor and will do my best to represent the 264,000 people in Council District Number 1, 98 towns, 4 cities, the land I love, the people I love, and I love to represent them in their happy hour and maybe their not so happy hour. And that is what public service is all about, assisting those individuals in their not so happy hour, but also on an evening like this, let's, let's celebrate, Bruce, Good for you. Thank you for the chairmanship you've given. Thank you. 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 Rock TV.